so just finished the L1 composite vehicle 4 test and um, use uh, motor age to pass the test and uh, some YouTube videos uh, just searching for a composite vehicle 4 um, and studied that watching like an hour or two videos and buying and buying the uh, the motor age uh, I think test questions only I think that's like either 10 or 20 dollars it was like maybe 80 questions but never could get to 80 questions my most I got was like the 40 questions and I had to restart the test uh, there was a question on um, once you uh, add fuel into the car uh, refueling afterwards it's hard to start what was the answer it was like the onboard refueling thing uh, EGR evap solenoid and vent solenoid I picked uh, uh, vent per solenoid uh, that was kind of tricky there was one where it's 6 and 14 um, and you measure 120 ohms what it could be I picked your H-ray cluster or I picked the ECU one of those because they hold the 120 uh, ohm resistor in them overall test was pretty difficult um, you pretty much need to know the regular stoichiometric graph and what's rich and what's lean and from there when you hear the problem is rich or lean you gotta well you're given data and you gotta figure out where your car falls under rich or lean from there they give you like four items to choose from or five items to choose from uh, four I think and then you gotta pick the one that will make the car run rich or lean and the one that's most likely will happen so that's that um, there is like a picture of a fuel pump and they're giving you uh, uh, pinpoint voltages and then gives you the answer uh, and which one to pick well I picked uh, well one thing you got to know is when voltage is crossing something um, let's say you have a point A to point B and if it's activated then the voltage let's say it used to be 5 volts but once it's activated whatever you're measuring is 0 volts so that's the number one thing you want to remember so if it says uh, you disconnected something um, and you want to measure something that's the idea we know your 5 volt reference very well so A is like 5 volts going in and B is the ground and C is the 5 volts traveling to the computer understand like if you're missing B will that cause the 5 volt reference to go straight to 5 volts uh, answer that question in your head and you can answer that question in the L1 um, what else can I say? Um, uh, no EGR systems, like if it's stuck open, that deals with uh, bad idling, could give you misfire. And EGR pretty much deals with uh, knocks at 2500 degrees. What else you need to know? So there's this really hard questions on the EVAP um, solenoid and per solenoid and vacuum on the fuel pump, fuel tank. So there's just all these uh, inches of water in the top and it says that idle, uh, one thing is on, one thing is off, like 30% running and off and the next one is 30%, 30%, uh, per solenoid is 30%. And then uh, I think the vent solenoid is like off, on, and then the top one is uh, is uh, vacuum uh, sensor, uh, pressure sensor. And pretty much you gotta look the differences, how they change. So when it's an idle, this is one thing, but when, when you're uh, on the purging 30% the numbers are s the, the the inches of water didn't change but the solenoids in the bottom are changing so 
just kind of focus on that. It's kind of similar to the transmission problem. There's only like one transmission question, and it was saying something like, um, is solenoid A bad or solenoid B bad? Or are they stuck open or are they stuck? So there's four options, stuck open or stuck closed. And, you, and it says like, uh, it tried to go to gear two and it tried to go to gear six and it didn't make it, so it's stuck on gear five. And then gear five is like everything's off. So you gotta look at gear two and gear six and see what's on and what's off and start playing the answers backwards. And so the answer was uh, D was stuck on all the time, I think. Because if I play that scenario on, uh, then it'll work out through the graph. Uh, that was a good three minute question but you kind of need to talk to somebody on how the transmission works in general. And in general, it's just a whole bunch of on and off um, things in the valve body to shift gears. And once the shift gears, uh, it's these on and off control fluid going into uh, the clutches and the clutches will finally uh, hold and release planetary gears and then that's how you shift gears. And um, once you you don't really have to understand that to answer that question. You just need to understand what's on, what's off, and to get gear. Uh, so if they tell you, if they tell you like gear two or three is working, but gear one doesn't work, they don't. They won't ask that. But uh, some unique gears are like I think gear two is all on and gear five is all off. So you want to notice those things and then answer the questions uh, based on what they told you is on and which one's off. Um, what else can I say? Um, uh, so for, there's heated O2 sensors, there's O2 sensors. Well, O2 sensors are heated. And so sometimes if they give you an option that is heated, but it's messing with air fuel ratio, so don't pick that. Um, and then the air fuel ratio sensor uh, is called the Y band. And that one has uh, voltages and if you, if you given if you look at the composite four graph on the right of the graph they have it in like micro micro voltage or something like that and just kind of be aware of that graph because in the scan two data they gave you that um, what else can I say so I'm driving home from Alameda to Council Valley it's a rainy day passed the test 38 out of 50 so I'm telling you from passing the test but not with flying colors of course so 38 means I didn't figure out uh, 2 plus 10 12 of them out of 50 so that in the real world is kind of like a C um, so what else can I recall um, So, uh, you're going to need to know about fuel pressure. Fuel pressure is like 58 to 60 something, I think. And if you look at the scan data and you see it's like 48, that means the fuel pump is not doing well. Uh, what else to know? Uh, know the, the V, kind of like VTEC for Honda, where it's like they're, they're, they're changing the, the valves and the lifts moving the lobe and their solenoids but basically there's two solenoids to control and there's two sensors to look on these camshafts so I picked oil as being stuck for one of them and the idea about these variable things are so only on the intake of the valve cams are we're playing with so if they give you an answer for exhaust that really doesn't change so go look at the intake side within the intake side you want to um, see what's the computer commanding and what is it actually happening and they will say something like oh yeah uh, one of these uh, cam sensors are being too we've just replaced it and the problem still exists and uh, that's the one I would pick oil on so kind of understand the logistics or the, the overall of the, the cam. So basically, you, you know that um, if you have a, a, a valve, it's set so, so big and, 
and only so much airflow can come in. However, if you can make it stay open longer, then you get more stuff in. So that's one idea of this messing with the lobes is to get the the valves to stay open longer. And it runs using water, I mean oil. And so that's the gist of it. Um, and there's a lot. Of, there's a few for voltage drop. So just notice, know that the voltage drop on a um, power side is more like a 0.2, and on the ground side you can have uh, more like a 0.5. And so just know that idea that voltage drop on the ground side it gives you more leniency. And um, also there's some there's a question like. Uh, they show you a picture of uh, coils and their uh, resistance and injectors and their resistance and uh, You can just pick a group that looks very close to together uh, The one I picked was like two coils bad and two injectors bad because the coils numbers You kind of know that on the secondary coils. They're closer to like 10,000 ohms plus or minus and If they give you something like eight or six something like that. It's kind of close to ten so pick that, but it was like down to one ohm, then it's like, oh yeah, so that was not good. So in the injectors, I think they're like supposed to be some number. Let's pick like six ohm or something, I forgot. I don't know if you can even find injector um, in the composite vehicle. So you're gonna just kind of play it from your own mind, like what an injector should be. And I think there was like two that's really low. So that's that. Um, what else can I say? So know about that. And then there's a question on um, you got HC and CO high, but you don't know if you're on the lean side or the rich side. So again, know that stoichiometric graph to know if you're on what side, and then you can answer the question. So I think I picked um, slightly high. So there will be give you slightly high HC, slightly high uh, CO, and they give you a little bit of NOx high. So is that lean fuel problem? So that's the picked one I picked, lean fuel causing that because uh, the HC was like in the 200 something so that's considered a misfire so I'm on the lean side um, but uh, so I use motor age um, somebody I knew said use go to test.com or something and uh, you can pay, obviously test the time sounds generic for many tests but you find the L1 one pay like ten dollars or twenty dollars to get those kinds of questions there. Uh, watching like three hours YouTube videos on just Googling composite vehicle for on YouTube, that will help. And um, this is a rough test. I think I'll, I can think of more, but right now uh, I need to rest a little bit. <laughs> so thanks for watching this really long 13 minute video. Um, hope you pass it. Um, you can probably uh, message me uh, you can find it on Risker a lot, and uh, if I know something, I'll try to answer. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.